Hello, everybody. Um, I guess I'm up next. I'm Matthew Hodgson from matrix.org. And I'm probably representing the odd one out here in that I'm not here to sell you anything other than possibly a dream because um, we're an open source project and we're a nonprofit uh, organization. We're actually getting set up as a US 501c. Um, it's very early days for us. We went and launched um, about two months ago now at TechCrunch um, Disrupt at San Francisco. And what we've done is to imagine a world where there was no SIP and no XMPP, but there is WebRTC, and considered what a signaling um, protocol would look like um, for a pure WebRTC world. So predictably enough, this involves HTTP, it involves REST, and it's really the thought experiment of what would happen if you wanted to do instant messaging and VoIP call setup for WebRTC, or in fact, any kind of JSON um, messaging or distributed JSON replication of state over a simple web API. And this is what Matrix is. Um, we're up at matrix.org. And I guess I could bore you by showing the uh, showing you the client server API or talk to you about the infrastructure and the architecture of the server server API. I reason it probably makes more sense to just um, show you a demo of one of our open source reference applications and um, just talk for a bit more of the architecture of the thing. So before I show you the demos, I'll talk a little bit more about the architecture. What we've done is to write a standard which is um, up on matrix.org slash doc slash spec. It's not complete, but it's basically describing the JSON and the URL schemes that you would use when sending a message. It uses a trapezium um, signaling model, a bit like XMPP or SIP. So if I want to send a message, I put some JSON to a URL, which then gets put from my server to your server, and then you have a long-lived HTTP GET request, which receives that content, that JSON. And that's basically how it works. And that JSON can be anything. It could be an instant message or WebRTC, et cetera. So as well as the standard, we've gone and put out a reference um, implementation in Python and Twisted, which you can get off GitHub right now. I challenge anybody to download it and get it up and running whilst I'm doing the talk. Um, and we also have client implementations on iOS, on Android, on AngularJS, on plain old jQuery, um, Python, Perl, and a bunch of other ones. In fact, somebody just contributed a Golang implementation the other day. And we also have a Golang implementation on the server side that somebody went and wrote too. So what does it look like? Well, let me go and um, show you um, a, t a typical um, chat room in Matrix. So this looks a bit like Facebook Messenger or Google Hangouts. It's very ugly. We're all about the standards and the tech rather than the user experience. But you can see there's a whole bunch of different um, chat rooms and one-to-one -one conversations here. And then you've got um, hash matrix on matrix.org itself, which is our main sort of social channel um, for discussion. And you can see it's, it's a chat room. It's got a whole bunch of text in there. I think we've got some images in there. Um, and we've got images at the bottom too. You can go and click on them, view the full-size ones. Now, we've, on the right-hand side, we have the people in there. Obviously, you've got me. I'm Matthew on matrix.org. Um, we've got, I think, about 200 people in the room here. Now, the cool thing is that some of these guys, like this guy here, is actually running his own matrix server. So in matrix, there is no single chat server. Instead, anybody can go and run a matrix server, and all of the conversation history is replicated and distributed with eventual consistency over all of those servers. This, in my mind, is really cool because you can cryptographically sign everything. And in fact, you have to cryptographically sign everything to assert the consistency of the conversation history and to assert everybody's identity. And it means that I can tear down a server completely. In fact, that would make a good demo. I should have done that. You can tear down a server completely and then bring it up again, and it synchronizes its history back in from the other servers participating in a room. And in fact, you can throw away all the data of a server and bring it back up, and it will go and synchronize back into a room. So it's this weird viral thing that you create a room in Matrix, and it's replicated over all of the possible servers, and you can't really kill it once it's out there. It uses a blockchain-style crypto model where you keep on signing the messages in the conversation history so people can't tamper with history. 
and um, anybody can run a matrix server and federate up through open federation and participate in matrix. Now, um, in the demo um, app that we have here, you can go and um, double click on any old message and see the underlying matrix um, data structure, which is some JSON. For a simple instant message, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, a body of the message and the message type, a little bit of metadata like its ID, when it was sent, the room it was in, um, the actual data type of the JSON. I think if I click in precisely the right place, I can do the same thing of an image. Again, you've got some metadata about the image, its MIME type, its width, its height, um, the URL that it sits at and all that sort of thing. But you probably want to hear about WebRTC because that's where we're here today. And rather than trying to do an external demo on the connectivity here, instead, let me get this right, I've got um, a chat room here which has got two versions of myself. Here on Chrome, we've got um, uh, Matthew, and here on Firefox, we have Evil Matthew. Evil Matthew is wearing a suit, as you can see. And uh, we've got a conversation here, so let's uh, demo. Um, this is running on a matrix server on localhost, so it's actually all happening locally, so I'm cheating a little bit there. Um, so you can see a typical conversation like this. If I want to set a WebRTC call going, then I've got my voice and video buttons up here. So let's trigger one from Firefox and see just how good the Firefox and uh, Chrome compatibility is nowadays. So I get my WebRTC permissions dialog. Let's go and accept that. And oh, you can see that we've got signaling-wise a call coming through. You can even hear it. And let me answer it in Chrome. Obviously, I've got to give it permissions there, too. Ooh, let me mute myself. And there you go, an amazing, really boring, but still functional WebRTC to WebRTC to call from browser to browser. So if I go and hang up on this, um, we can do the cool geeky thing and look at the JSON that was going on there by, hey, double-clicking on the message. And, well, this is a bit more ugly, thanks to STP, everybody's favorite ugly protocol. But you can see it's some simple JSON saying, hey, we're doing an offer, and here's the offer of the STP, and it's just sitting there straight out of WebRTC. And we've got the normal metadata. We've got an m.call.invite, which is the type of the JSON for it. And that's how you set up a call in WebRTC over Matrix. You literally just put some JSON with some STP, and it will federate over to anybody else in Matrix, and it's as simple as that. So we think that relative to Jingle and relative to SIP, just being able to do a very straightforward HTTP put and an HTTP get is a little bit more straightforward and compelling. It's kind of fun to be able to just go into the inspector in one of these browsers and look at the um, network activity and I guess I have to refresh the page in order to bring up the actual network requests. But you can see the um, HTTP hits which are going on here, and I can just go and copy them as um, curl and chuck them into a terminal, set it going. And I think this is the event stream, so this is actually just looking at the JSON which is coming down the pipe. So if I went and put a message into this room, I'll do it from here and say, hello world. Then oh, you can see in the background the long live get request re responds with a chunk of JSON. And well, ironically, in this instance, it's updating my presence activity rather than showing the um, hello world. But we could then go and do another get request, look at the next event, which would be the message itself. In fact, we can cheat and look in the window here. And hey, here's the event that this browser that was lo looking at. And that one hasn't responded yet, but this one has. And you can see that, hey, it's a body, hello world, message type, and no, dot text. So that's basically Matrix. And I, I don't know whether people think we're smoking crack and gone completely off the rails, or whether this is a cool thing that might be useful to everyone. It's all Apache licensed. It's all on GitHub. All we want is to give it a chance to put it out there, see if people build on it, see if people run their own home servers, if they federate up. And perhaps this could be an opportunity to build an open federation on the net, which um, is I know, a bit more ubiquitous, a bit more like email, a bit more like the web than we've seen with uh, XMPP and SIP. So if you have any questions, we've got a stand over there. Um, we'll be talking at the open source options um, panel on Thursday morning at some ungodly time, at like 8 o'clock or something. And come say hi. Come and hang out on Matrix, um, hashmatrix on matrix.org. Thank you very much.